Hello there you guys, welcome to another of my live videos and today I'm just be officially um, updating you on some more uh, latest uh, news so if you do consider a drop your likes and if you do consider a uh, subscriber to the channel um, as always so reportedly uh, quite recently you know Gary Neville um, has come out um, and he's uh, had his um, overarching view um, on Manchester United and he believes uh, that we are um, on the right track um, under um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer so reportedly you know he mentioned that you know we did um, okay um, in the Southampton game but he just basically said at the moment, you know, Manchester United, you know, don't have uh, that uh, clinical element, so we are creating uh, chances, but we're just not, you know, being uh, clinical enough um, in front of a uh, goal. Obviously, we do know that we've enjoyed them um, very, very difficult uh, start uh, to the season. You know, we've only registered five points uh, from possible 12, so we've only won one game, we've drawn two, and of course, uh, we have uh, lost one, so we have um, enjoyed them um, a very, very uh, difficult uh, start uh, to the season. But, you know, we have got um, a lot of uh, young players um, in the team, of course, uh, that are upcoming, and obviously, you know, there's still a lot of uh, players are uh, developing um, at Manchester United and of course are uh, trying to um, improve as also um, Gavin Neville um, had mentioned so these are still basically for me um, improvements are uh, needed um, in the squad I do believe um, in the January transfer window definitely no further uh, more um, investment um, is needed probably perhaps next summer as well you know further uh, more um, investment um, is needed uh, but obviously you know, I think you know Ole Gunnar Solskjaer you know, brought three good players into the squad you know throughout uh, the course um, in the summer and I did say you know they are massively essential and you know they are massively essential for the growth and the development uh, development um, of this Manchester United team. Um, obviously Solskjaer spent around £148 million on Daniel James and Wan Bissaka and of course um, on Harry uh, Maguire so it was good that we did address you know, some of the uh, problematic um, areas uh, with Daniel James you know, I think he's had a fantastic start to his Manchester United career so far. Obviously you know, he's scored uh, three goals uh, so far uh, this season but my overarching view on Daniel James is you know, he's still a prospect and needs uh, time uh, to develop and he um, needs their time to develop and I think you know he's um you know, Cross uh, needs to um, improve him um, a little bit. Obviously, mainly so far this season, you know, we have put Daniel James on that right, even though he's supposed to be a um, more um, effective um, on that left hand side. I think with Anwan Saki, you know, he's also had a fantastic start to his Manchester United career, and I was very, very delighted, you know, that we uh, that we got uh, that uh, you know that right back in. And I think Daniel, you know, Anwan Saki, you know, can emul emulate into like um, Gary Neville. I think he's got all the ingredients required to become a huge success um, at Manchester United. But Anwan Saki so far, you know, has had a fantastic start to his. Manchester United career. I thought I, I said he would be a fruition this season. He was also very, very good throughout pre season. You know, his defensive abilities are good, his distribution that's uh, really, really good. So, I have been very, very impressed with him so far. And mainly with Harold Maguire, you know, I've been impressed with him, you know, so far as well. I think Harold Maguire's had a fantastic start to his Manchester United career. You know, maybe the club, you know, did overpay for him a little bit, but I did say, you know, we have got a history um, of spending, we've got a history um, of spending uh, big on players. Um, and I did say in these, ma in these markets this day and age, obviously, you know, you have uh, got to more of a pair of four players and obviously you know we're a massive club you know we've got massive revenues and that we're one of the richest clubs in the world so obviously you know we can um, afford uh, to um, over pay uh, for players so we'd obviously paid £80 million pounds for Harry Maguire obviously he's um, the most expensive defender in the world he's also the second most expensive uh, signing um, in the Premier League but I was just disappointed you know throughout the course of summer you know that we didn't recommend a midfield I mean because that's one of the priority areas of course uh, where Manchester United uh, needed to uh, strengthen up and don't forget throughout the course of summer as well you know was um, in search uh, for them um, right winner but even though we've enjoyed um, a difficult uh, start uh, to the season you know um, I still think you know there has, there has been players that have performed really really well so far uh, quite a lot of players um, have uh, been um, underperforming and there's certain players uh, that do uh, need to um, improve them um, at Manchester United um, I also think Anthony Marshall's um, you know um Enjoyed a very, very good start uh, to this season. Obviously, we do know that he's um, out uh, with injury um, at the moment. He's got um, a fine injury, he's Anthony Martial. Obviously, we are hopeful that he can regain full fitness uh, by the Leicester game um, after the um, international break. But Martial um, has scored a couple of goals so far this season. I think he has provided a couple of assists. Obviously, as he did confirm uh, at the start of the season that Anthony Martial um, had been uh, given uh, that number nine shirt. So, obviously, we do know he's playing more central this season, he's Anthony Martial, because he does seem to be uh, more of an um, effective um, in that central position. Martial, of course, has scored 50 goals for the football club obviously now he's into his 5th season as a Manchester United player, actually Anthony Martial scored um, his 50th goal um, against Wolves, don't forget the club, give him a new 5 year deal uh, back in the uh, January transfer window and of course he is on a substantial amount but anyway we have got a lot of players um, on big contracts um, at Manchester United uh, but Anthony Martial's um, had a fantastic start this season um, the other attribute on Marcus Rashford is you know he was very very poor um, against uh, Southampton, like Gavin Neville said he believes that you know we did well um, in the Southampton game um 
but you know Rashford was really really poor obviously you know Rashford was, was full full in Anthony Martial's role um, in the game um, against uh, Southampton following Anthony Martial's injury and Rashford you know looked so isolated you know in that uh, central area he looked very very isolated didn't latch on to any of them crosses and he had them opportunities but he just didn't take them Marcus Rashford and you know Rashford was inconsistent in the last couple of months of last season but I still say he's a long term solution for Manchester United I'd say he's developing really really well but I just don't think Rashford is yet you know emulated uh, to that level and I did say when Rashford's on form you know he's good at receiving the ball, he's good at um, getting uh, them runs in behind his Rashford um, and I still really, really like him a lot and of course um, he's um, only uh, 21 years of age. Um, I do believe Jesse Lingard, you know, he's enjoyed a very, very difficult start to the season. This is probably why he didn't start from the start um, against Southampton. You know, Jesse Lingard was poor in the last couple of months of last season but I still say he's uh, the long-term uh, solution uh, for Manchester United. So there's quite a lot of players, you know, that have uh, been um, underperforming you know, uh, so far uh, this season uh, but I have got a lot of um, element of concern Concerns um, about uh, that midfield. Uh, my opinions um, on Paul Pogba. Uh, with Paul Pogba, um, you know, I think he's performed okay so far uh, this season. I don't think he's performed to the same sort of extent as as you know, uh, you know, Marshall and Daniel James. Um, and that's uh, performed, you know, Paul Pogba. But I still think he's done um, okay. I thought he was quite poor against Southampton. Um, I, uh, I think prior to his penalty miss um, against Wolves. Uh, apart from that, I think you know he's done uh, quite well so far this season um, as Paul Pogba. And Paul Pogba, you know, is um, a very very um, imperative player uh, for Manchester United. Obviously, we do know that Oli Gunnar Solskjaer confirmed that he was willing to sell Paul Pogba uh, this summer but obviously you no know, Paul Pogba's move uh, to Real Madrid uh, never uh, materialised because uh, obviously you know, Real Madrid had been in for Paul Pogba you know, for the entirety um, of this uh, summer. Um, obviously we do know that Paul Pogba you know, will reject um, any offers you know, to renew um, his contract uh, with Manchester United and that but um, I think Paul Pogba's plans for the future you know, is still uh, to make a um, move uh, to uh, Real Madrid. Uh, Paul Pogba's brother Mathias has recently come out and um, he's um, you know, basically said that Paul Pogba will focus um, on the season uh, with Manchester United even though Paul Probably you know, doesn't want to be um, at the football club because Paul Popper confirmed uh, early on um, in the summer, you know, that he was seeking for a new challenge. You know, he publicly admitted that he wants to leave Manchester United, and of course, he said, you know, he wanted to uh, rejuvenate um, his career uh, by uh, leaving at the football club and that. But I did say his first choice preference was Real Madrid, and his likely destination uh, was Real Madrid. But I think you know these. Um, I think, you know, Zinedine Zidane, you know, will be infuriated, you know, that Real Madrid, you know, didn't uh, sign uh, Paul Pogba. Um, because I think, you know, I said the stumbling block of, I said the stumbling block for the entirety of the summer of Paul Pogba leaving Manchester United. Obviously, you know, I was reflecting on the substantial amount we put on him because, you know, we were quoting that wanted around £180 million for him. So basically, you know, we were demanding just over double than what we initially, you know, paid him uh, from Juventus uh, back in uh, 2016. So we wanted around um, £180 million. Obviously, you know, Real Madrid were not willing to pay up to £180 million uh, for Paul Pogba. But I did say he's a very imperative player and I'm very, very delighted now, you know, that he's uh, remaining um, at the football club for this season uh, and, you know, especially, you know, with our failure to land a midfielder in, you know, throughout uh, the course of um, the summer. Um... <laughs> But yeah, very, very um, imperative player. Don't forget, you know, early on in the season, you know, Paul Pogba was subjected to online racial abuse, you know, following his uh, penalty uh, miss um, against their Wolves. But, you know, Real Madrid, you know, they spent a substantial amount, you know, throughout the course of the summer. You know, they spent over £300 million on five players, was it? You know, they did generate some of the money back because Real Madrid, you know, did uh, sell uh, quite um, a few um, of their players. But, you know, Paul Pogba's agent, you know, Mini Raleola, Rola, you know, Rola, throughout uh, the course of the summer, you know, had been working on getting Paul Pogba's transfer to Real Madrid uh, completed and he actually said at the start of pre-season you know that Paul Popper you know was um, in the process um, of leaving uh, the football club but Paul Popper has still got two years left on his contract with Manchester United with an option to extend it by further year obviously you know he's not he's not only our uh, most expensive signing obviously we paid £89 million to him he's also you know one of the highest player players at the football club on what 290 grand a week is it just under 300 grand a week he's on obviously he's also um, a World Cup winner um, is Paul Popper but it hasn't only been this summer you know he's been subject to a lot of transfer speculation reflecting about last summer you know he was subjected to a lot of transfer speculation based on his poor relationship with Jose Mourinho of course Paul Pogba got one of his best wishes of course when Jose Mourinho uh, left uh, the football club um, obviously there was talks early on in the summer about Paul Pogba possibly making a return back to Turin because Paul Pogba did have four good years um, in Turin but did, you know hasn't, hasn't really you know, replicated this you know at Manchester United obviously now he's into his fourth season as a Manchester United player since he rejoined from Juventus uh, back in uh, 2016 but you know we do know how good Paul Pogba can perform we have seen him at his best as a Manchester United player and he's arguably you know, one of the best midfielders um, in the world You know when he's uh, playing um, at his best I think you mainly see the best of Paul Pogba you know, when he's freed up um, 
But I think he's had a pretty decent start this season. He was also very, very good throughout pre-season. And I thought last season, you know, Paul Pogba's stats, you know, very impressive. You know, he scored 16 goals and provided um, 11 assists in 47 uh, games um, in all competitions. You know, Paul Pogba's, what, 26 years of age. You know, he has still uh, got um, a lot of uh, development um, in him. Um, but I'm very, very delighted, you know, that he's uh, staying um, at the football club um, at least uh, for uh, this season. Um, obviously, the news uh, came out um, earlier on uh, this week um, about uh, Paul Pogba saying that, you know... Um, you know, he'd uh, withdrawn her from the France squad, and we do know that Paul probably, you know, loves to uh, play uh, for France, but he had he had withdrawn her from the France squad, you know, after um, he had uh, sustained um, an ankle injury um, in the 1-1 draw uh, with Southampton, like I did say, I hope his injury is not too severe, and hopefully, you know, he can regain full fitness uh, for uh, the Leicester game after the international break. He did, an, he did say early on this week that Paul probably, you know, was set to uh, undergo a scan, uh, he was uh, set to um, undergo um, a scan, you know, to investigate uh, the extent um, of the damage, uh, but hopefully, um, his injury is not too because we have convinced him to remain at the football club but I did say you know we've got to avoid him you know getting any kind um, of injury because you know we haven't uh, really uh, got him a backup uh, to uh, Paul Pogba uh, but Paul Pogba you know I did say the couple of main fact reasons why he wants to leave anywhere because maybe he's frustrated with the lack of competitiveness at Manchester United you know maybe he wants to be playing amongst better players and he feels as though he's playing amongst good enough uh, players um, at Manchester United but Solskjaer you know spoke a lot about Paul Pogba throughout the course of the summer he also spoken to Paul Pogba and Solskjaer told Paul Pogba you know he does not lead to leave Manchester United, you know, to uh, fulfil um, his ambitions, and this is obviously you now what um, he had uh, basically um, said. This is obviously, you know, what he'd uh, basically um, said and that. But, um, yeah, so Paul probably, you know, is uh, staying um, at the football club. But I did say, you know, we want to get back, you know, to being a competitive elite level football club. Obviously, you know, want to get up, back up there, you know, uh, winning their trophies and that. And obviously, you know, we haven't seen this in the last uh, six um, or seven years or so. And I did say, you know, the dimension of this football club, you know, the history of this football club, you know, we should be up there challenging and, of course, uh, winning their trophies and that. And I did say Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's expectations this season, you know, will be to finish in that top four. And obviously, you know, we've got uh, maybe uh, win some silver. And obviously, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has got to um, exceed uh, these expectations. I did I, I did say analysing our squad as it stands, you know, it isn't good enough to win the league or, you know, mount um, any kind of title challenge up at um, this present time. But I think it's, you know, definitely you know, good enough uh, for a um, top four finish. So I did say I don't think we'll win the league for at least the next couple of years. So I think our aspirations, you know, will be that top four um, in the next uh, couple of uh, seasons. But I did say anyway, you know, we have got uh, big um, ambitions uh, for uh, the future. But obviously, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's made it clear, you know, he wants to bring that winning mentality back to the football club, you know, he wants to bring that fear factor back to the football club, and obviously, you know, that fear factor hasn't been there, you know, since uh, the Alex Ferguson era, and I think there's a vast majority of pundits out there that have got a lot of doubts about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, bringing that fear factor, you know, uh, back to uh, Manchester United, but Gavin Neville's over at Jim on it, you know, he he believes, um, you know, so we're going into the right direction under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, he believes the style of play, um, and that um, is right, but we're just, haven't, we're just not being clinical enough um, in front of goal, and basically, you know, Neville knows how, you know, poor we've been in the last six um, or seven years and that, you know, there is uh, a lot of, you know, there is a lot of growing frustration uh, uh, around a lot of Manchester United fans, um, including me and that, um, because obviously, you know, we believe, a lot of them believe, you know, we're never going to get back to how we, how we was um, under Alex Ferguson. But I initially said anywhere, you know, regardless of our managers, you know, we're never going to follow Alex Ferguson's legacy. You know, we're never going to replicate, you know, what we did um, under Alex Ferguson. And that. Because obviously, you know, we've got that, you know, recent history of big success that we had um, under Alex Ferguson, you know, because we had Alex Ferguson, what, 26, 27 years. And obviously, it was 26, 27 years um, of success. Uh, but I did say so far this season is basically, you know, replicating last season because last season, you know, wasn't clinical enough in front of goal, we conceded far too many uh, goals there last season, so I haven't really seen much um, improvement so far uh, this season and um... I, I, I thought, you know, throughout pre-season, you know, we was really, really good. You know, we won six games out of six. You know, we scored 12 goals um, and only conceded three goals. But, um, and then I said at that point, I think we're going to have a better season this season. Then we got off to a remarkable start against Chelsea, you know, winning comfortably uh, by four goals to nil. And then um, all of a sudden, it just seemed to have all gone wrong. You know, we dropped two points away at Wolves. We dropped all three points at home to Crystal Palace, losing to them for the first time in Premier League history, then losing two points uh, to Crystal Palace uh, last weekend. So, you know, these still improvements uh, need um, in the squad but Solskjaer did say earlier on in the summer that you know he believes um, he's following um, Alex uh, Ferguson's uh, philosophy and that but you know we have got quite a few players you know out uh, with injury and that so that's another headache for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in that aspect um, obviously we know I give you the news uh, yesterday um, of in regards to Anwan Bissaka um, obviously we do know that earlier on this week he had withdrawn, uh, withdrawn uh, from the England squad um, after he had um, 
sustained um, a back injury again hopefully his injury is not too severe and hopefully you know he can regain full fitness uh, for the Leicester game uh, some reports are saying that he should be a uh, fit uh, for the Leicester game and Wam Saka obviously you know and Wam Saka is on that list of one of our most expensive signs like I said we paid £45 million pounds from up front with £5 million add-ons which did potentially you now rise it uh, to £50 million pounds. Uh, don't forget Diego Dalot's been out with injury but he should be okay uh, for the Leicester game uh, obviously you know Diego Dalot um, is one of the backup options um, we've got quite a few full Backs, but Diego Dalla obviously you knows the upcoming future. Obviously, Young Zay is one of the backup options. Um Obviously, you know, Luke Shaw um, is out uh, with injury. You know, he's out until early October uh, with a hamstring injury. I, don't, I think Luke Shaw's had a pretty average start to the season, if I'm going to be quite honest with you. But Luke Shaw's a very imperative player because I think, reflect on his impressive performances last season, you know, he won uh, the double uh, player um, the season, uh, did Luke Shaw. Um, he won a double player of the season, did Luke Shaw, and um, I think mainly so far in his tenure with Manchester United, he has done, you know, mainly, really well. He has enjoyed quite a, a few difficult, you know, times um, as a Manchester United player, but I thought last season he was good, and it's, it's a shame to see him out, because he's our first choice left-back, he's very reliable on that left-hand side, you know, he's good at making them overlapping runs, and he's had a lot of players who are, are, who are reliable at Manchester United at this moment in time, but Luke Shaw is definitely, you know, one of the uh, reliable uh, players, uh, but he's out uh, with a hamstring injury, and um, like I said, Anthony Marshall um, is out uh, with a thigh injury, obviously, you know, Lee Grant is still out with injury, Fossil Mentor is long-term absence, um, obviously, Eric Bay um, is out uh, with injury, um, and until Christmas, obviously he sustained a knee injury throughout uh, pre-season. Derek Bay, and it's uh, Eric, Man Eric Bay's Manchester, his career with Manchester United has been mainly affected, you know, with the amount of um, injuries um, he has uh, sustained. Um, and I think, you know, maybe in January or maybe next summer, you know, we would be open to selling Eric Bay. Um, you know, if the we would be open to we would be open to selling um, Eric Bay. You know, if the right offer came in, maybe we would look to at least recoup the initial thirty million pounds. You know, that we did pay for him uh, from Villarreal back in two thousand sixteen. But Eric Bay is a very imperative player, he's a very, very imperative player um, he's got great potential as well and he holds his line, you know, when he's uh, fully fit but, you know, he's just sustained a lot of injuries as a Manchester United player, now he's into his fourth season um, at Manchester United, so don't forget, you know we have still uh, got uh, quite um, a few um, injuries um, and that, um We have uh, still uh, got um, quite um, a few um, injuries um, and that. Um, but like I did say, guys, you know, I'm very, very um, disappointed you know, that we didn't get a midfielder in, you know, throughout uh, the course of um, the summer. Um, and I do believe, you know, the players, you know, we was in for, you know, throughout the course of the summer, I probably believe, you know, we will, we will, we probably will reignite our interest in them players in January. With Bruno Fernandes, I don't think we will, because of last reports I read about Bruno Fernandes, it did say, you know, he was on the verge of joining Real Madrid and that. But we have opportunities there for Bruno Fernandes. He was one of our main prize targets throughout the course of the summer. And I would have been excited about the prospects of Bruno Fernandes you know, playing them alongside uh, Paul Pogba in our midfield because I do believe, you know, to be honest with you, you know, they would have uh, complemented each other, you know, uh, fantastically well in that. Um... But I think we'll go in for the players we was in for throughout the course of summer. I mean, January, the majority of the players, of course, we was in for. But like I said, you know, obviously, you know, last season we finished sixth and, of course, we failed to qualify for the Champions League. And I did say in that aspect, you know, of us failing to qualify for the Champions League, I think, you know, that went against us um, in the summer transfer window. Because I did say, you know, certain players at a certain calibre and level, you know, would have had reservations about joining uh, the football club, obviously, you know, with our failure to qualify for the Champions League. And obviously, you know, we've actually failed to qualify for the Champions League. What is it, three times um, out of the six seasons? Seasons, you know, since um, Alex uh, Ferguson's uh, retirement and that. Uh, but Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, spoke about our recruitment policy, I think, early on in the summer. And, you know, prior to this summer transfer window, you know, we haven't been competitive enough in the last two to three windows. You know, we didn't get anyone in January. Obviously, reflecting back last summer, you know, we'd, well, we'd, we'd, reflecting back last summer, you know, we didn't uh, get um, our number one uh, tags and that. But for me, there's still fair more investment needed in the squad because you can uh, see uh, the deficiencies um, in the squad. Um but for me, you know, if we're not competing uh, for the top four, you know, by, by uh, you know, the new year, I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's job, you know, could be um, under a serious threat. I do believe, you know, the pressure now is mounting up on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. You know, there's, you've got the vast majority of Man United fans, you know, criticising um, his tactics and that. Um, but I hope it works out um, under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, because he was a great player for Manchester United for 11 years, you know. He flourished um, under um, Alex Ferguson's guidance. And he knows the traditions of the club and that. And, you know, I hope he can get Manchester United back to uh, where uh, they want to be. Uh, there's a lot of people having huge doubts about it, though. Um, obviously, you know, Solskjaer, 
Walsh Guys are our fourth manager since Alex Ferguson's retirement. And I did say, you know, we're not really known for the sacking club and, you know, we haven't really uh, got the structure to keep sacking managers. Already three managers have been sat, you know, since um, Alex Ferguson's uh, retirement. And, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has got uh, experience as a manager, you know, not really to the highest level. So that is also um, an element um, of concern. You know, he did really, really well in that three month period when he was the interim manager last season because uh, the results were good, the performances were good, and he exceeded expectations uh, and all that. But, you know, since he got the job uh, in March early on this year, you know, permanently, you know, it's just seen to um, all gone wrong, you know, to be um, quite honest with you. So, if, you know, if obviously if this bad run of form continues to persist, obviously I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, will be uh, sat uh, by uh, the football club, even though Manchester United, you know, do not uh, want uh, to sack him. But, you know, you know, I think the vast majority of Man United fans as well, you know, have obviously, you know, been criticising Ed Woodward, you know, they've also been criticising, you know, the Glazers demanding both them out and that, you know, but Solskjaer, I think, spoke with Ed Woodward, Ed Woodward throughout the course of summer about the lack of a uh, business term in the transfer uh, market, because obviously, I think, the board actually said um, at the start of the season that, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is, well, they assured that he will be back in the next couple of windows, because they actually assured this summer that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, would have been back, in my opinion, you know, he wasn't uh, back term enough, so if Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is still here in January, then hopefully, you know, we can get um, a couple of uh, more players in, because Solskjaer said he wanted to bring at least uh, five uh, new um, additions uh, to the squad, um, but um, yeah, and actually now, you know, a lot of players um, have left, you know, the football club, you know, since um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's arrival. Obviously, you know, we must have seen around, what, seven or seven players now leave. Obviously, Valencia left at the end of last season after he's served uh, 10 years with Manchester United. Um, obviously, we saw uh, Chris Smalling leave the other week. He's gone out on loan to Roma. Um, I think like four, four of our players that have gone have obviously, you know, gone to the Serie A. And quite, we've let a few players now uh, go um, out um, on loan. Uh, so Chris Smalling left. Obviously confirmed was it early on this week that Matty or Diamond left the football club, you know, to join Parma. Um also, you know, Ander Herrera left the football club and it was a shame that we didn't recruit a replacement for him. He left early on in the summer. Obviously, you know, Marion Fellaini left. And obviously, Herrera and Marion Fellaini, they were two long-serving players at the football club. Herrera served five years at Man United. Obviously, Marion Fellaini served six years at Manchester United. Of course, Romelu Lukaku were left there at the football club. And I think in that aspect, it was good business from the club, you know, to generate a substantial amount for the flop. And it was good to see us recoup the money that we did pay for him from Everton um, a couple of years ago. Um, obviously, like I said, Sanchez uh, got, uh, got confirmed the other week he got loaned out uh, to Inter Milan um, Joe Pereira he, of course um, he went um, out um, on loan uh, to Hearts um, as well Dean Enson's gone back on loan uh, to Sheffield United um, yeah, so quite a few players now um, have left, you know, since um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's um, arrival. I do believe there's still players now at the football cl club that are no longer good enough uh, to represent uh, Manchester United. So I think in January or next summer, I think we need to get rid of a couple of more players. Uh, Marcus Rojo, uh, Solskjaer confirmed prior to the Southampton game anywhere, he was definitely staying um, at the football club. Rojo was subjected to a lot of transfer speculation, don't forget, you know, I think the likes of Marcella, Monaco and AC Milan inquired about getting Marcus Rojo in. Obviously, Rojo's just got under two years left on his contract with Manchester United. And I think he's enjoyed a very, very difficult time with the club, you know, mainly with the injuries um, he has uh, sustained. I thought Rojo was very impressive throughout pre-season, but hasn't played so far in the Premier League, you know, this season um, as Marcus Rojo. Don't forget Everton had inquired about getting him on transfer deadline day, uh, but obviously his move to Everton uh, never uh, materialised. But like I said, he's serviced now to requirements um, at Manchester United. He's a uh, Rojo. Um, Maybe we could orchestrate on, you know, selling Eric Bay maybe in January um, or next summer, reflecting um, on his injuries. But, you know, despite us, you know, loaning, you know, Chris Smalling out, you know, we have still got a lot of uh, cent central defenders um, in our squad. You know, there's still around six centre-backs there. Obviously, we've got Vic Lindelof and Harry Maguire. That's obviously, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's first choice. Um, and I think, you know, they complement each other, you know, fantastically well. You know, obviously, Harry Maguire is the best option than what we've got um, in our back line um, at this present time. You know, Victor Lindelof, you know, these question marks around him, you know, can he keep the consistency up? Can he keep performing to the same sort of level as we want him to well maybe he can uh, obviously I think he's been a bit below par in the last couple of games but obviously now this is victim lost third season um, as a Manchester United player and um, so hopefully you know um, he, you know he can uh, keep uh, the consistency up and um, with Phil Jones obviously you know he's been a long-serving player at the football club you know he's been here you know since uh, the Alex Ferguson era as um, Phil Jones you know he's been here now eight years I think he's now into his ninth season as a Manchester United player I think we need, co need to orchestrate on getting rid of him in January or perhaps next summer because he's no longer you know, good enough uh, to represent uh, the football club. Um, obviously, we've got Alex Tuanzebe. He's one of our centre-backs. But I think he's going to be um, a big part of the squad this season is Alex Tuanzebe. Um, I thought he was impressive on his loan spell last season uh, with um, Aston Villa. And I do believe he can replicate uh, this uh, with Manchester United uh, this season. So, I think we're orchestrating on, you know, keeping him um, at the football club. Um 
But yeah, you know, we have got a lot of us, we've still got a lot of centre, central defenders um, in the team. I do believe we look slightly we look slightly better defensively, but you know, you can still see, you know, that we are uh, conceding uh, goals, you know, which we you know, really uh, shouldn't uh, be doing. Um like I said, in that midfield, you know, you've got the like, you know, we, uh, take Paul Pop out of the equation, you know, obviously we've got the likes of McTominay, Pereira and Fred and that, you know, I think, you know, McTominay, you know, has had a pretty decent start to this season so far, you know, mainly McTominay has been playing alongside Paul Pop in our midfield and I still don't know if McTominay is the long-term solution for Manchester United, I've got the same thoughts about Pereira and Fred and that, but McTominay, you know, when he plays well, he can play between the lines, his defensive abilities and that are really, really good, um, it's got McTominay's, um, but he's still developing his time when I think he's developing you know really really well but he's had a great uh, start uh, to this season uh, my opinions um, on Fred um like I said, I don't know if he's the long-term solution for Manchester United. You know, I'll credit Fred in the aspect that he was an exceptional player um, at Shakhtar and Nesk, but he hasn't uh, really uh, replicated this um, at Manchester United. Fred was good towards the back end um, of last season. I thought the games he did participate throughout pre-season, you know, he was quite good uh, with Fred, uh, but I still don't know if he's the long-term solution for Man United. But I think he's a better option than the Manu Matic because I think he's more mobile and better on the ball than Matic. Uh, my opinions on Andrews Pereira, again, I, I'm, I'm very, very sceptical about him. You know, I don't know if he's a long-term solution uh, for Manchester United. So for me, in January, you know that uh, midfielder uh, does uh, need to be um, addressed in that Matic, I think we need to talk straight on getting rid of him uh, in January or next summer because Matic is very, very inconsistent. You know, he's too slow. He's not getting any younger. And if you know, you know that he uh, makes uh, that midfield, um, of course, uh, look uh, totally um, imbalanced in that. Um, but like I said, um, we have been inconsistent in the last six um, or seven years. And I said I don't like the way the football club um, has been run um, in the last uh, six um, or seven years or so. Like I said, £148 million has been spent this summer under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Just under £400 million was spent under Mourinho. You know, Mourinho recommended 11 players into the football club and that. Um, but I already explained the reasons why it didn't work out under Mourinho. Because it was part of the bus football under Mourinho. The style of play wasn't right. Um, obviously, you know, he, there was, he, he never really had that winning philosophy. There was no sort of transfer strategy under Mourinho obviously you know the board weren't back in the signings that I wanted to recommend in last summer you know Mourinho had bad disputes with the board he had bad disputes here with, uh, with the top players and that so obviously this is why it didn't work out under Jose Mourinho even though he was regarded as one of the uh, best uh, managers um, in the world um, and he's won, obviously won, every, won stuff everywhere um, he'd been in that couple of tiles with Chelsea obviously won the Europa League and League Cup in his first season with Man United obviously I think won the Champions League and that um so he won stuff basically you know, everywhere um, he was. And then obviously, you know, uh, you've got Solskjaer that's still basically you know, inheriting 10 of, those, 10 of those players that Mourinho brought in because obviously Lukaku left um, the other week. Um, obviously under Louis van Gaal, just over £200 million pounds was spent, don't forget. Um, obviously, you know, he brought a lot of players in, did van Gaal, but the vast majority of them now um, have left uh, the football club. But he's still some of them here now that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer you know, um, is inheriting. Um, obviously, you know, it didn't work out under van Gaal because he didn't have like, the right kind of philosophy. Um, but we did win the FA Cup under Louis van Gaal and under And under the David Moyes area, you know, we spent just under 60 Seven million pounds on Marion uh, Fellaini and of course um, on one matter and um, so we've spent just under a billion pounds um, in the last six years so that just indicates how always spending big on players and getting them glad to go players you know doesn't um, always guarantee you uh, success you know you can get the best players in the world you know it doesn't matter who you get in you know obviously you know you've got to play as a unit and they've got to play as a team or of course um, it isn't uh, going to work out and that is the thing if you want to take into account what was spent under Alex Ferguson you know we spent uh, way um, over um, a billion uh, pounds but a hell of a lot of money is being invested into the football club but you know we're known for you know basically you know spending big on players and then what we do is then we spend big on players and then what we do is you know and we also give them substantial wages but then what we do is we let them go for next to nothing so in that aspect you know that's bad business from the club you know we did it with Damien you know we basically paid over 12 million pounds in from Torino you know he's served what four years with Man United then we've just let him go for just over three million pounds so we've lost out on around 9.1 million pounds there uh, so we've lost out on money there you know and the Herrera we paid around 30 million pounds for him for Atletico Bilbao back in 2014 and then obviously you know we let him go on a free transfer early on in the summer um, so this is what you know basically you know Man United do you know we let them go uh, for next to nothing you know we shouldn't uh, be uh, really uh, doing that you know if we'd have got rid of Damien a couple of years ago or maybe even a year ago I think you know we could have recouped the money that we did pay for him from Torino you know back in uh, 2015 and that um, my opinions on Ashley Young um, obviously you know he's been another long serving player at the football club you know this is what Ash Young's now well he's been here eight years but this is now his ninth season as a Manchester United player. Obviously, you know, Ashley Young, you know, did play um, against Southampton. Um, obviously, you know, he was captain in the team. Um, 
uh, I think it was uh, he only played because of Luke Shaw's injury anyway. You know they dashed Young. You know he could be um, in line to actually you know play um, against uh, you know Leicester depending on if our our Wan is going to be fit enough and that. Um, but like I said, I think this could be uh, this probably will be should I say Ash Young's last season as a Manchester United player. Um, obviously now he's coming to an end of his footballing career. You know he is now what uh, thirty five uh, years of age. Obviously you know we give um, Ash Young um, a new one year extension uh, last season. Uh, but I think you know this could you know this should be um, his last season um, as a Manchester United uh, player. Uh, but I did say you know there has been cultural problems um, at the football club um, in the last uh, six years um, or so. And so I did say at the start of the summer he was looking to build a squad worthy of the club's history. He was looking to be players in that I thought that we're going to fit the culture of the club and the history of the club and so far you know we have brought, brought three good players into the football club so I will credit you know Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, in that aspect and I also credit Ole Gunnar Solskjaer that has obviously you know he's got a lot of trustworthy um, in his young uh, players in that because like I said at, at the start of the video you know we have got um, quite um, a lot of uh, young players um, in the squad. Uh, my opinions on Mason Greenwood is obviously you know Solskjaer confirmed at the start of the season you know he's been assured uh, more opportunities this season and I think you know Solskjaer probably will will, will, uh, will, will take the squad against last a little bit um and I think Mason Greenwood definitely needs to get given the start from the start. Uh, he needs to play from the start um, against Leicester because so far he hasn't played a game from the start. He's so far this season made four substitute um, appearances. Mason Greenwood, Mason Greenwood was very impressive for the reserves last season. You know, he scored 29 goals, was it 30 goals, sorry, in 29 games. And he's only uh, 17 uh, years in the verge in that. And, you know, we didn't get that replacing for Lukaku because according to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, it was obviously, you know, to prioritise uh, the development um, of Mason Greenwood and that. You know, with Chong, obviously, I don't think he's yet played, but I think he should get given his opportunity is Angel Gomez, you know, should get participate in the game against Leicester. I'm surprised he didn't participate in the game against Southampton. Angel Gomez, I think, you know, he did say he was going to be a big part um, in the squad uh, this season. Um, but um, yeah, for me, we need to definitely, you know, still see further um, more um, investment um, in the uh, January transfer window. Now, as I updated you um, earlier on uh, this week, um, in regards uh, to uh, David De Gea, um, I want to give you um, an update on. Um, Obviously, in regards to David De Gea, um, obviously it did say you know we could figure, figure you know losing uh, David De Gea um, in the January transfer window. Now we do know, reflecting back earlier on uh, in the summer, I think it was throughout uh, pre-season, it was looking very imminent uh, that David De Gea you know was going to be committing his long-term future in Manchester United, and it was looking likely you know he was going to be signing a new long-term contract with the club. It did reportedly say David De Gea was set to sign a six-year contract with a football club worth up to around three hundred and seventy-five uh, grand a week. But now uh, there has uh, been um, change um, of scenery. Now reportedly you know David De Gea has not yet uh, put a uh, pen to paper um, on a new contract obviously Manchester United have been in negotiations of, try of trying to get David De Gea a new contract at least now for the last what 18 um, or 19 months but obviously you know we haven't uh, got him um, a new contract and he said at the start of pre-season that you know we'd held, we'd, we had breakthrough in negotiations you know with uh, you know there was breakthrough in negotiations you know with the football club and David De Gea's um, agent uh, George Mendes and he was looking very very likely you know he was uh, going to be uh, signed and um, a new contract and that. So if the football club, you know, can't give David De Gea a new contract, obviously, you know, would orchestrate on, you know, cashing, cashing, cashing in for him um, in January rather than letting go on a free transfer at the end of at the end of the season. Because we do know we do know that David De Gea's contract term um, expires um, at the end um, of the season. Um, and yeah, and reportedly, you know, he has turned down a three hundred and fifty thousand pounds a week deal from Manchester United. And obviously, you know, that figure would make him the highest paid goalkeeper in the world. Also, making the highest paid highest paid um, in history um, in the football club um, as well. But obviously, we do know uh, this. Uh, this obviously, you know, um, hasn't um, materialised. So obviously, if David De Gea does leave the football club, obviously, you know, we are going to need a replacement for him. And you know, obviously, early on in the summer, you know, David De Gea, you know, was was subjected to a lot of transfer speculation. Obviously, we do know it said that PSG were regarded as the favourite to sign him obviously you know Real Madrid of course have been long admired been reflecting back in 2015 Real Madrid were on the brink of getting David De Gea but due to the fax machine uh, the deal uh, never uh, materialised also I think Juventus had inquired about getting him um, early on um, in the summer but we thought you know that um, you know his transfer saga had finally ended when we thought you know he'd uh, been uh, signed when we thought he was going to sign a new contract but um, obviously you know this isn't, this hasn't um, obviously you know, uh, materialised and you know I think you know we're, we're still confident you know we can cash in around £30 million pounds for Hey, in the January transfer window, even though he has got him um, under a year uh, left term um, on his contract. I did say at full value, David De Gea is worth um, up to £100 million for the goalkeeper, but I did say early on this summer we won't get that £100 million, you know, because he's got um, under um, a year uh, left term um, on his contract. But, you know, David De Gea has been a long servant. He, you know, he's been at Manchester United eight years. Obviously, now he's into his ninth season, ninth season at Manchester United, and of course, he's been here since the Alex Ferguson era. Um, obviously, we paid around £17 million for him from Atletico Madrid back in 2011. 
and I did take the time when Real Madrid were in for him, he could be open to making a return back to Spain, because you know, don't forget his relatives are in Spain, his girlfriend and that's in Spain, and obviously he began his career in Spain, but um, obviously, you know, he didn't, um, you know, make um, a return uh, to Spain, uh, did uh, David De Gea, but now this is ninth season at Manchester United, I do believe David De Gea has had a good seven and a half years at the football club, I thought he was inconsistent in the last couple of months of last season, uh, obviously, you know, he made a goalkeeping howler um, in the game, in the 2-1 defeat uh, to uh, Crystal Palace, so David De Gea is still regarded um, as one of the best uh, goalkeepers um, in the world, but he obviously he's made over 300 of 300 other appearances for the club in all competitions. You know, he's won everything he did domestically. You know, he's won the club's play of the year four times out of the six seasons, you know, since um, Alex Ferguson's uh, retirement, you know. Um, no, four times out of the six seasons. Um, I think it's something like that, you know, um, reflecting basically you know, um, on his impressive uh, performances. But David De Gea's still got a lot of development in him. You know, he's 28 or is he 29 uh, years of age. Um but um, yeah, we could uh, lose him um, in the January transfer window. But they reportedly, you know, we've got a few goalkeepers in our agenda, you know, who could replace him because recent reports said early on this week that we've instructed scouts, you know, to keep a close eye out on Jan Blanc from Atletico Madrid. Don't forget, we was in for our Blanc earlier on in the summer. Um, it also said we've, we've uh, instructed scouts, you know, to keep an eye out um, on uh, Dominic uh, Ligovic uh, from Dynamo Zagreb. So there are a couple of uh, keepers in our agenda who could uh, replace uh, David De Gea. Probably perhaps they're not on the same calibre or level. But I think if we do continue with the, with this lack of competitiveness and we're not competing for the top four by January obviously you no know, David De Gea you know will want out of the football club um, anywhere but the main thing I don't understand about this is that you know De, De Gea for a long long time you know was demand if he, he was demanding 350 grand a week you know to sign a new contract on Manchester United and for a long period of time you know we was not willing to meet his £350,000 a week wage demands but then we obviously come to a decision uh, recently, you know, saying, you know, look, we'll pay you 350 grand a week. And then, and then it was looking very imminent, it was, imminent, it was, go it was going to be signing new contracts. But obviously, you know, this, has, this just, this just uh, hasn't ever materialised there at the moment. But look at other goalkeepers we've got. We've got Sergio Romero, obviously, he's our second choice keeper. Obviously, you know, he isn't reliable enough, you know, to become um, our number one goalkeeper, Sergio Romero. You've got, you know, Lee Grant, who's injured at the moment. Dean Enton, of course, has gone back on loan to Sheffield United. I think that's good in that aspect because I think, you know, Dean Enton, you know, will gain a bit more of um, experience. Um, obviously, um, Joel Pereira, of course, like I said, uh, a couple of weeks ago, went uh, to Hearts um, on loan. So, yeah, for me, definitely um, need a replacement for David De Gea, of course, and if he does uh, leave uh, the football club. But like I did say, um, after the international break, uh, Leicester um, is going to be a very, very tough um, encounter uh, because Leicester have had a pretty decent start to the season. You know, they've gained, um, they've registered, sorry, um, eight points uh, from the possible 12 in their last four league games. They've won their last three games um, in all competitions. Uh, we've, used, we've got a good record against Leicester. You know, did the double of, double of them last season. You know, in the last 11 meetings, you know, we've won seven, there's been three draws. And of course, uh, Leicester have only uh, won one. So it should be a game, you know, Manchester United, you know, should win. Um, but, but, you know, we need to improve. We really, really need to improve. I don't know if we need to improve. You know, we need to improve um, our record um, against the top six sides because our record um, against the top six sides, you know, wasn't uh, that good uh, last season. But for me, you know, we, we're not playing bad. You know, the performance against Southampton in the first half was quite good. We just wasn't clinical enough. I thought against Wolves in the first half, we played really, really well. But again, not clinical enough. Crystal Palace, we had a hell of a lot of chances in that game. I think we had over 20-odd shots in the Crystal Palace game. But obviously, you know, we only managed one goal and uh, we're just not being clinical enough in front of goal. And I did say at the start of the season, you know, we look a bit, we look more fluid now um, up front. Um, some people think, you know, us getting rid of Alexis Sanchez, you know, was a mistake because people think now we're lacking options um, in that attacking line. I don't think it was a mistake because Sanchez, you know, enjoyed the difficult 18 months with the football club. He didn't exceed expectation levels as we all thought he would have done. You know, don't forget, even though Sanchez is still on loan, despite that he's on loan with Inter Milan, you know, we're still paying the majority of his wages. You know, Inter Milan have only agreed to pay four points. 5 million of his annual 21 million annual salary so we're still giving him around 300 grand a week so he's still the second highest player player at Manchester United don't forget he could still return to Man United because obviously you know Inter Milan got him on loan without a buyout option or there's no obligation to make the deal permanent next summer um, so he could possibly return to Man United but I don't think anywhere you know Manchester United you know, would be able to take him back but Solskjaer said anyway you know it was time for Alexis Sanchez to go um, obviously reflecting on the difficult 18 months um, he had there with the football club obviously you know it wasn't really first choice anywhere um, and, you know, sustained quite a few injuries as well, you know, um, as a Manchester United player, you know, did Sanchez and just didn't replicate, you know, what he did at Arsenal, you know, he didn't replicate, you know, what he did at Barcelona and that, um, and I'm surprised, you know, that he didn't do that, but, and, um, but for me, in January, we've definitely now got to see uh, further um, more um, investment um, uh, um, in the squad without um, a shadow um, of a doubt and that. Um, 
But like I said, you know, we just want to be back uh, to being um, a competitive elite uh, level uh, football club. Um, and I still say Ligue 1 Solskjaer is in the process of rebuilding because obviously analysing, you know, the majority of the squad um, is not Ligue 1 Solskjaer. So maybe we do need to give him time, you know, to, you know, get some more plays in in the January uh, transfer window and that. Um, but yeah, the main part of this video was to give you an update of in regards to Gary Neville. You know, he believes Man United is still on the right track under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. He believes that you know the style of the style is right, and that he was mentioning that you know we've got a you know we've got a good we've got a young we've got a young, young we've got a lot of young players in the team. You know, are developing. You know, and still uh, trying to um, improve in that. He was mentioning you know the you know the recent history of big success that we had um, under um, Alex Ferguson. This is what obviously you know Gary Neville uh, was mentioning. He says we did okay in the game against Southampton, but we just haven't got that clinical ele element. Um, at the moment and he did mention that obviously there's an element of frustration amongst the Manchester United fans of how the club has been um, in the last six um, or seven years and that but you know Neville is a very very respectable pundit you know he knows what he's talking about you know his football and knowledge um, is absolutely uh, fantastic and um but um, yeah, and I'm just hopeful that, you know, like I said, this team in this day and age, you know, can replicate, you know, what the team did um, under um, Alex Ferguson. But I've got huge doubts um, about that um, at the moment. But if Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, was to be sacked by the football club, you know, who would you recommend in? You know, who would you recommend in if he is to be sacked and his bad runner form does continue to persist? Don't forget, you know, before Ole Gunnar Solskjaer got appointed in, you know, don't forget we was in for Pochettino for a long, long time. I think Pochettino's philosophy is really, really good. I don't know if he, it'd, if it'd been the right philosophy to Manchester United and that, you know, Pochettino, we was in for him for a long time, but we actually know we obviously our preference was Solskjaer over Pochettino because obviously Solskjaer was the cheapest solution. We'd have to pay more money for Pochettino at the time, and obviously you know Solskjaer knows the traditions of the club. Pochettino doesn't, but I respect Pochettino. I think he's a good manager. You know, he's now in his sixth season in management. You know, with Tottenham. Well, yeah, obviously before he was at Tottenham, he had a short tenure with Southampton as well. Uh, but Pochettino, you know, hasn't got that proven pedigree yet ever winning there many silverware, and obviously you know that will be his expectations this season. You know, to win some silverware uh, with Tottenham. Obviously, you know. Pochettino Pochettino, you know, early on this summer, I think this was prior to the Champions League finally, he threatened to resign as Tottenham manager, you know, if he if he wasn't back throughout the course of summer, you know, you know what, Tottenham did good business throughout the course of the summer, you know, especially um, on deadline day, so regarding the business they did, they should be up there competing this season, should Tottenham, they have come close to winning the league on quite um, a few um, occasions, but, you know, Pochettino, you know, don't forget, you know, we was in for him um, at one point, um, but yeah, very, very good manager, good at developing players and that, and, um, at the time, you know, Mourinho got sacked, you know, Neville said, you know, he would have been the right candidate for Manchester United, you know, um, Richo uh, Pochettino. Um, but he's done a really, really uh, good uh, job uh, with Tottenham. Um, I just don't know if he'd be able to replicate this um, if he was to come to Manchester United. Don't forget at one point as well, you know, he was in uh, Paul Zinedine Zidane. Um, obviously, you know, he's now Real Madrid manager. Well, he actually stepped down as Real Madrid manager for nine months. Then obviously, you know, walked uh, back um, into the job and that. So who would you recommend in, of course, if Ole Gunnar Solskjaer you know, is, is uh, to be sat uh, by uh, the football club? I think another disappointing finish, you know, throughout the course of summer, earlier on in the summer, should I say that, we didn't get a sporting director in because, you know, was in search uh, for um, sporting director uh, as, as we all know obviously I did say you know we need a structural change um, in the football club and there was quite a few names mentioned you know at the time who could have taken that director's role at Manchester United uh, but obviously you know uh, we didn't get the sporting director in so we just basically let Ed Woodward you know obviously uh, our transfer business you know uh, for the summer basically um, but yes for me there's still improvements uh, needed um, in the Manchester United squad but um, Gary Neville you know has given a good um, honest um, opinion he still thinks we're on the right track he thinks you know we, you know, we didn't play too bad against Southampton he says we're playing the right style but we're just not you know being clinical enough we are creating chances but we're just not being clinical enough in front of goal so if we can be more clinical in front of goal they will turn into result, uh, they will turn into positive results and with us not being clinical enough in front of goal so far this season this is why we've been getting negative results negative results. We was clinical against Chelsea. You were getting showered in there. Yeah. The best of it though. Why what time are we going? Five past nine now. We've got we're, we're, we're down there for quarter to eleven. Alright. Shut my door, Dad. And um, yeah, so anyway, guys, drop your coins, like on the channel. Um, if you do consider uh, subscribe, um, as always, and take care, God bless, and I'll see you all again very, very soon. Thanks for watching.